Hi and welcome. I'm happy to have you here with me. So today we are going to be talking about Cytonic. It's the third book of the Skyward series and I have already introduced the first two books, Skyward and Starsight, in previous videos. So if you want to understand the story a bit better, take a look at it. Today we are going into the nowhere, so buckle up. I start with bullet points. Cytonic is book three of the Skyward series, which consists of four volumes and not three, as I said in previous videos, and is a space opera for readers 12 years and up. It was published by De La Corte Press on November 2021. It has 432 pages and the reading time, I guess, is eight hours. A similar book is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. Yeah, that's it to the bullet points. Now let's move on to the author, Brandon Sanderson. He was born in 1975 in Lincoln, Nebraska, and is probably one of the most successful authors of fantasy books like Elantris, The Mistborn Saga, The Way of Kings, Oathbringer, The Reckoners series, and, and, and. And for his books, he gained multiple awards and topped the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah, I'll leave it here with the information about him. If you want to know more about this top author, you can watch Skyward, my first video about a book by him. And I highly recommend it because I talk in detail about his career, which I find very interesting, by the way. Yeah. Let's go to the summary of Cytonic. The book Sanderson says was one of the most difficult of his career. I'll briefly recap the backstory. Against all odds, 17-year-old Spencer has become one of the best starfighters of the DDF, the Defiant Defense Force, and has saved her home planet Detritus from extinction by the Krell. The Krell are an alien species that is part of the superiority and the superiority is a galactic alliance of different species and they rule the galaxy and they also made Detritus to a prison planet for humans. Now Spencer managed to escape Detritus by using her cytonic abilities and she jumped light years away to the city of Starside where she infiltrated the superiority. Meanwhile, the superiority has started a galactic war which it wants to win with the help of Delvers. Delvers are old, mysterious and hostile galactic beings who can destroy entire planetary systems. And Spencer got in touch with one of these Delvers and she could communicate with it and change it. And in the process, she recognized something strangely familiar about this Delver. And she thinks with her cytonic abilities, she can understand and stop Delvers from destroying in order to save the galaxy. But to do that, she must learn more about cytonic and she has to understand what she is and who she is. In Cytonic, Spencer travels with Mbot to the nowhere, a different dimension from which she might never return because no one has ever returned from the nowhere. And she senses the presence of the one Delver she has changed and the Delver tells her that she can find out more about Cytonic and what Cytonic is by walking the path of elders. Now, you can imagine the nowhere as a space that is surrounded by different looking fragments and a light burst in the center of it. And Spencer lands on one of these outer fragments that looks like a jungle, something of course Spencer has never seen before, and she discovers silver sand 
and her father's pilot pin, which is strange because she didn't have it with her. She is then ambushed by pirates, but she's able to save her father's pilot pin, which is said to be very valuable. Then Spencer meets Chet Starfinder, another Cytonic who becomes her new companion. Chet has been in the nowhere for 170 years without having aged. And it turns out that he is the former owner of Mbot, Commander Spears, but he has forgot about it because the longer you stay in the nowhere, the more you start to forget everything and ultimately forget who you are. But he is her new companion and they traverse these fragments to get to the nowhere, to get to the inner part of the nowhere. But that isn't that easy because parts of these fragments are dominated by pirate gangs. Spencer begins to forget everything. Only her father's pilot pin, a so-called icon, and the silver sand prevent her from forgetting about herself as well. Chet and Spencer try to hijack a pirate ship to get to the nowhere faster. In the process, Spencer is caught by the gang of the Broadsiders and their pirate leader, Peck, but is then accepted into their crew because of her extraordinary skills as a fighter pilot. She then enters a tournament for the Broadsiders and flies against opposing pirate gangs and becomes the new champion the new leader of the pirates by defeating the old one. And that is someone we already know from Starsight. It's Hesho, the former king of the Kitson, who has lost all his memories in the nowhere. Even in the nowhere, Spencer is repeatedly attacked by the Delvers. And then she learns that the secret of the Delvers is to be found in the light burst in the center of the nowhere which the Delvers of course try to prevent. There are a few surprises at the end but I don't want to give them away here only this much some of the characters make heroic sacrifices. This to the summary let's go to my impression. As in Starsight in Cytonic, we again go to a completely new place and we get a whole new crew of supporting characters. And it's like you can't get too attached to the characters in one book because they might not be around in the next one. Which I think is a bit of a shame because it makes their stories feel incomplete to me. On the other hand, it has something unpredictable about it. But I have to admit, Cytonic is the least favorite book of this series so far. I really don't know what it is, but this book is like, hmm, how can I put it? Long-winded at times, maybe even a bit boring. No, boring is the wrong word. But this book has something very philosophical about it and we go to the bottom of the question who am I and what makes me? And I think that's, that philosophical thing is something very different and is not what I've expected after I've read Skyward and Starsight. Let's put it that way. Good. In Cytonic, we again go on an adventure with Spencer and Embot, but the pace of this book is much, much slower with the main focus on Spencer and her being very introspectively and stripped to the bone. By being so isolated, Spencer seems a bit lost at the beginning, groundless, floating in the nowhere, which has something very expansive about it. The whole book has something very expansive and it underlines that we really can lose ourselves if we don't have an anchor point, like in this book, The Icon. 
which reminded me of a lot of the totem, the top, in the movie picture Inception. And by the way, the fragments immediately brought Avatar to my mind with the flying pieces of land. Just saying. Okay, there's no one for Spencer to orientate herself to, but that's precisely why we get to see her development the best in this book in Cytonic. And also Mbot's development is very interesting. He's now in this cleaning drone. He has lost some of the skills he had with the spaceship shell, but he remained himself at the core evolves and learns what feelings are and literally finds himself, which I insanely enjoyed. I really think it's a feat to create an artificial intelligence so humane that you feel it's a friend and it is. I like the idea to have a spaceship or in Cytonic a cleaning drone as a friend because we really get to the key point here no matter what shell we are in at the end we always remain ourselves. I also madly enjoyed the new secondary characters especially the pirate leader Peg with her boys but also Chet and of course the reunion with Henshaw, the former king of the kids, and there's something very adventurous about this space pirates and Spencer is so happy because she gets to do what she loves the most. She gets in this tournament, she can fly and battle against these opposing pirates and is in her element and just Spencer to the core. But aside from the flying parts, she measured a lot in Cytonic. She is less hot-headed and much more thoughtful. And I also found the link between Spencer and this new secondary character rather loose and expedient. Then came a part of the book with a downfall and I was almost left hanging there. Some parts were unnecessarily stretched and felt like a filler. Towards the end there's some action again, i.e. the space battle, the spaceship battles. Also in this book there are some interludes where Spencer finds a mental link to Jürgen, her boyfriend, and these mental meetings are very intimate. And Jürgen also gives Spencer support and structure in this infinite nowhere where time doesn't exist. And then to the ending of this book, it is left open again. I didn't find it very exciting. That's how it is. In a nutshell, despite the fact we learn much more about Delvers and what Cytonic is. The book is mainly about the development of Spencer and Embot, so it's a very character driven book. Yeah, that's to my impression. Let's go to the conclusion. As I said before, of the three volumes, I like Cytonic the least. Admittedly, though, the two previous books set the bar very high. It's not a bad book and I still enjoyed reading it. It's a book for any age group and gender and I love that about this book. I also looking forward to reading the final volume in the series. It's called Defiant and then present it on my channel as soon as it is published. But yeah, that's everything I have for this book. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This would really help me out. See you next time. Bye.